Good morning, friends. Today we are prepping for the first pop-up shop of 2024, and I'm so excited. I usually take January and February off from pop-ups because it's pretty cold here in Jersey, and also because I feel like I need a break every now and then. I go really hard on pop-up shops in the spring and summer, and most recently the fall and a little bit during the holiday season. So two months off, it, it was needed, honestly. But now I am so ready to get back into it. This Saturday, I have my very first pop-up of the year. It's at Madewell. Guys, what? Madewell. <laughs> they reached out to me at like the literal same time I reached out to them. It was just, it was meant to be, honestly. It's here in Hoboken, the town I live in, my favorite city in the world. It's really only a few blocks from me. I might Uber with all my stuff. I might just walk myself over with my handy dandy wagon. Either way, I don't have that much made, so I need to actually make inventory, and that's what this week will be dedicated towards. I want to premiere some of my new products that I want to include in my first collection of 2024 but give people a sneak peek at this pop-up and also just to gauge how people like the labels, how people like the scents, and maybe switch things up for the first collection depending on how people interact with the products at Madewell. I'm going to have one small table. It's going to be like four feet and I think I might bring a garment rack or maybe I won't. We'll see what happens with that. But the products I really want to focus on for this pop-up are candles. I have like a few pre-made but not that many and I also need to go through the pre-made ones. Make sure they're not ruined, make sure that the labels are all okay and if they need to be cleaned up I'll clean them up. And then I'm also going to be making some new candles. I will be making some scrunchies because I want to bring my scrunchie pegboard. It's going to be overall such a good time. I'm so excited. I get this like sense of just like it's time to do another pop-up. I've had enough of a break. Let's let's just do it. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I am preparing for a wedding, so I haven't been taking as much time to sign up for pop-ups, and I've been avoiding signing up for pop-ups actually so that I can focus on my wedding. But I'm really happy I decided to do this small one. It's not taking too much time out of my wedding planning stuff, and it is giving me more energy and excitement. <laughs> so I am really excited to do it. I got some packages here from Makesy because I need to stock up on materials. I'll go through them with you. I'm using a few new fragrances. I have some fabric that I've had for a while. I haven't bought new fabric in a while for my business, um, but I'm going to cut out some scrunchies. I think that's enough of an intro. I think we can now start prepping. So excited. <laughs> first things first, I do want to show you the things I got from Makesy. It's the normal stuff, honestly, but I did get one new item, which I think we all saw coming because of this. So you already saw that I got these iridescent ivory Ara minis and I love them. I made the cereal. <coughs> Whoa, what is happening? I made the cereal scented candle with this. And then I'm also going to do the orange creamsicle and the taro bubble tea, as well as a bunch of others once I think of some more nostalgia collection fragrances. But I love the way this looks. I think it's beautiful. And I didn't just want to make minis. So I got the big ones. All right, this is my first time seeing them. It's so beautiful. I love it and it feels really good too. Like it feels like a solid candle jar. All right, so I'm going to make the big versions of the cereal milk candle and it's going to look so pretty. I got, I think, two packs of 12 of this, uh, which I think should be good for at least this pop-up. I don't expect to sell 24 of the cereal candles at this really small pop-up, um, but I think that's good enough to at least like test them out. And then also in this same like shipment, I got the regular ivory vessels. So I did decide to go from the matte cream to the matte ivory vessels because the cream ones just looked a little bit dirtier. Not actually that they're dirty, but like they're a little more beige and I wanted it to be a little bit more white. And so I thought the ivory was good. I didn't want it to be actual white because I have gotten these in the actual white color, but it was like too white. I think ivory is a good middle between white and cream it's like a good happy medium so i got a bunch of these minis and then i also got the big versions um the 12 ounce ones i haven't gotten the 8 ounce ones yet because i'm still conflicted if i even want to continue to sell the 8 ounce candles because i think i have too many sizes like i think i want to stick to two sizes 
three will be great because obviously the more the merrier but it's just so hard to keep stock of all of my inventory like in this room and then also to bring a bunch of different types of sizes to pop-ups it's becoming logistically and physically too hard to have too many options so i almost want to like simplify my product category product catalog product catalog um, so I'm just getting the 12 ounce and the mini 2.5 ounce for now. Also the 8 ounce ones come with the lid and I don't want to use those lids anymore. The lids like don't stay on, they just are placed on top and I've had issues with them cracking. Um, people don't realize that they're not stuck on so when they go to like pick it up it'll like fall off like at pop-ups and I just don't really like the look of them either. I would prefer to kind of just have a dust cover that's really pretty. Um, I saw um like inspo at francesca's ironically and it was this really like simple candle but the dust cover was like a bright pink with really pretty um like words written on the dust cover i think i might do that that could be pretty i have some construction paper here that's really pretty that i could um use my cricut to cut out like into a cool shape that's like somewhat circular maybe like flower shaped um i think that could be the move it would be one a money saver and then two i think it would really let people gravitate towards my candles because it adds more color it's like really related to my whole like colorful theme and vibe anyway this is the matte ivory looks exactly the same as the matte cream when you don't compare the two but this is what i want so we're going with it i got two packs of that i believe and then for the minis i think i got what did I do? Three packs of matte ivory and three, pa three, three packs of matte iridescent ivory, which should be good enough for right now. I have a ton of the black minis still. That's why I didn't order any more. I just like still have them. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some candles right now. <laughs> I do have an order that I need to make for a mahogany teak wood. This is from Vine Vita. I love Vine Vita. Love them. The fragrances smell so good. So I need to make a few of those. And then while I'm at it, I'll also make like a few big ones of mahogany teak wood for the pop-up. And then I have like, I'm so grateful that I still have a good amount of the Fruit Loops scent for the cereal um, candles. This is also from Vine Vita, which is great. And the prices are so affordable too. So if you haven't heard of Vine Vita, definitely check them out. And then also on the agenda for today... Lime Sangria and Guava Blossoms. This is from Makesy. This is one of the only Makesy scents that I still use because people love this one so much. And I've used a bunch of Makesy uh, fragrances. In fact, for my small, small, well, in fact, for my fall and winter collections, I use a lot of Makesy fragrances. But as part of my core collection, this is like the main one I use. And then I have one from Candle Science. I really use fragrances from literally everywhere, but this is Black Sea. I use this for my Sandalwood Musk and High Tide Candle, which is the best seller and the one I recommend everyone gets from my shop if you're curious about like which one you think I recommend. That one, Sandalwood Musk and High Tide. Definitely do that one. And then I have Black Amber and Lavender, which is from Brambleberry. And I use this for my Lavender... A candle. I can't remember the exact name right now. Oh, it's called Vanilla Lavender and Clary Sage. That one's like my second bestseller right after the Santa One Musk and High Tide. Uh, but these two both use the cream vessels. So I'm going to make these in the ivory vessels that I have um, to make the switch, I guess. I wonder if I have any more cream vessels somewhere that I should probably use up first. Maybe I should check on that first and then save the ivory ones for a bigger pop-up or for online orders because I want to get through the cream ones because I've officially decided I want to get rid of those and have the ivory ones. All right, so I have to figure out how many of each I want to make. Also, these aren't all of my fragrances, as you might know. Like, I have a ton more, but because it's like a somewhat small pop-up and it's only a four-hour pop-up, I just don't think it would be worth it to bring like every single thing ever. I'm just going to bring like the best sellers and what I want to like display on the table. So that's why I'm doing these main five plus whatever I have back there. I'm just putting all the wicks on the wick clips right now to prep all of the vessels while 
the candle wax is heating up because it takes a little bit of time for the candle wax to heat up so i just like multitask i am so excited for this pop-up if you haven't watched my previous videos i will explain how i ended up getting this gig at madewell but basically i knew that they did pop-ups with small businesses like this isn't a new concept for madewell they actually host a lot of small business owners and they do pop-ups for small businesses that's just like a thing that madewell does at least the madewells that are close to where i live and i had seen that uh created by christine who is a popular like instagram small business she had done a pop-up with the madewell here in hoboken as well as a couple others like close by and she posted about it and i was like oh that's really cool like they must be doing some sort of like special collab and then i walked into my madewell here in hoboken a few times and on the weekends i see that they have small businesses set up like in the corner when you first walk in by the doors and i was like oh it's not just created by christine who does pop-ups it's like other small business too and i was like oh maybe they like actually work with like any small businesses and i should just reach out so one weekend i was feeling confident and spontaneous um so i went up to the girls who are behind the cash register i have such a hard time with that cash register and i was like i would love to do a pop-up here i'm a local small business owner i gave my whole spiel and they were like oh my gosh we know who you are i was so shocked but basically a local blogger had recently posted about monica's collective um as like a really cool small business to support like online business to support that is also local at hoboken so she was just like hyping up local businesses as part of the blog post that she was writing um but the madewell people like social media people who were looking through um like instagram trying to find more small business to collaborate with they had seen that post that the blogger posted and read the article so they were planning on reaching out to me anyway asking if i wanted to do a pop-up and i was like well that's amazing because i'm already here <laughs> and then i got the contact info of the person who coordinates the small business pop-ups at the hoboken location and she emailed me about two weeks later saying i was approved by madewell corporate to pop up and now i can pop up at any madewell location which is wild I worked with their schedule and this Saturday ended up being the best date for us to do like this first pop-up and that's that. I'm very grateful, very excited. I love shopping at Madewell so this could this, this is really gonna be great and I feel like a lot of the demographic of people who would walk into Madewell would also support my business but I think it's gonna be like a good opportunity for everyone involved. I had literally just enough wick clips for the wicks that I need for this bunch of candles. Love when that works out. I do have more wig clips. I haven't really explained my setup in a while so i thought i would explain it the makesy wax warmer goes right over here on the left side of my standing desk but right now i have it lowered so that the wire can reach the outlet i have these hay crates here which i love and i stack them so that they're pretty close to the nozzle here but there's enough space in between where i can put the pouring pitchers and then i also have my little scale here this is from amazon i believe and i'll link everything here i always link everything in the description and then on the actual table i have everything lined up nicely these are all pouring pitchers from makesy clearly i've used them before i should probably clean them up but i love them this is the smaller one i don't remember exactly how many ounces but i use these for like smaller um rounds of pouring so like the minis over here i'm gonna use the smaller pitcher and then i have bigger ones for bigger quantities that's where i pour the wax into these little tumblers 
um, measuring tumblers. I can't remember exactly what these are called. I think I got these from Amazon as well. This is where I pour the fragrance. So I'll put this on here and then pour in the fragrance because I need to measure out exactly how much fragrance I want. And then I'll put it over here, wait for this to be loaded with the exact amount of wax that I want. Then I'll pour the fragrance into the wax and mix it up. Um, I use these wooden spoons for mixing. I just keep it in this little tin pouring pitcher. These are just towels that I use to clean up any messes and to hold the hot pouring pitchers when the wax is in it. And oh, I'm also using just like coasters so that these don't touch my cutting mat that I use for sewing. <laughs> and then I also have gloves that I use occasionally when I don't feel like getting my hands all like oily from the fragrances. Um, also got these on Amazon. Oh, and the last thing is this little thermometer that I think someone gifted to me from my family, but you can also get that on Amazon. And that's just to test when the wax is hot enough in here to finally pour out into the pitchers. At some point, wax exploded onto the lid of this. That's why it looks gross like this. I should really clean it, but it looks like everything is melted. I don't know if it's hot enough yet, so I'm gonna use my thermometer and figure that out and then start pouring. I don't know what's going on here. I cannot believe how efficiently I made those candles and the fact that I used up all my wax and still 
got done with literally every single candle that I had prepared to make. Like I put a bunch of wicks in the vessels and poured out a bunch of fragrances, measured it all out. And I was like, oh, I think this is like about how much wax I have. And based on how much wax I thought I had, I just like set up what I needed to set up on the table. And usually I'm like about right, but a little bit off. I usually set up way much more than the wax that I have available to me. But this was perfect. Like the exact amount of wax that I had to melt down and to pour into candles, I set up the exact right amount of vessels and fragrances for it. It was pretty nice. So I have all of that setting and it looks so beautiful. I love bulk making candles. It's just so therapeutic. Strangely enough, I got this all done in like an hour and a half. It normally takes me a little longer, but I was working efficiently. I was working smart and I got it all done. So I have so much more time to work on other things. However, it is important to take breaks. You don't want to get burnt out. So I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to go for a walk because fresh air is important, especially for small business owners like us who stay in our crafty rooms and just do a bunch of crafts indoors. Like, especially now that it's turning into the springtime, it's so helpful to go for like a quick 20 minute walk come back you feel refreshed you feel renewed you feel so much more productive it's so worth it to take out 20 minutes of your time away from your crafting room and just like doing something with fresh air i'm going to do that while i'm out there run some errands and need to make some returns and things like that and then also i think i'm going to take a quick skillshare class because i'm in the middle of a couple learning paths and i'm just so into them right now that i'm really craving learning something from one of the courses i'm currently taking i talk about skillshare all the time but just in case you haven't heard skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with a wide depth and breadth of topics ranging from illustration to graphic design photography music marketing productivity self-care you name it there is something for everyone on skillshare i've taken a number of courses and I've learned so much from every single one of them because their instructors are the best at what they do and they teach things in such a simplified way that it's so easy to pick up. I've been so completely inspired by so many of these instructors who are professionals in everything that they do and teach and it just makes me more inspired and motivated to go ahead and like learn what I need to learn in order to achieve my dreams. Whether you want to take a course on something that will help you excel in your small business, in your entrepreneurial life, in your 9 to 5 life, or if you want to take classes that help you pick up a new hobby like drawing, graphic design, literally anything you could think of, Skillshare will definitely help you reach whatever goal you were trying to reach. As I've mentioned in the past two or three months, this is the year, 2024, where we are not holding ourselves back from achieving our dreams and Skillshare has definitely been the first place I've gone to to start researching and discovering different ideas and concepts and practices and activities that will help me reach exactly the person I want to be this year. I mentioned that I am in the middle of a learning path, which is what I'm really excited to go and do right now but basically a learning path is a curated sequential class collection to master a specific skill or competency i started dabbling in drawing because i feel like the art of drawing would just help me out significantly in my small business endeavors and also i think it's a really fun and therapeutic activity to do just for myself so i started a learning path called discover the art and science of drawing i feel like i love science and i love art so this learning path sounded exactly like what i was looking for the fact that learning paths have multiple classes and side of them that are taught by different instructors is perfect because you get different points of view of the same topic and you hear things explained by different types of people which is usually what I need in order to fully grasp a concept. Throughout and at the end of every class there is some sort of hands-on practice or activity that the instructor encourages you to practice based on whatever you learned in the class that you had just finished. I love this because it's hands-on learning, it's at my own pace, and I feel like I'm actually getting something out of the classes. One of the learning paths that I've recommended to some of my friends is called learn to sew all the skills you need to make your own clothing and as someone who does make my own clothing I've actually gone through this learning path just to see how they would teach it to a beginner and let me tell you it's really good if you're interested in starting to learn how to sew or get into fashion design or just maybe mend your own clothing this is a really good one and I feel like they explain everything so well in the learning path the next one that I am excited to start in fact I can do these both at the same time you don't have to do one learning path or one class at a time you can take as many as you like and go through each of the classes as quickly or slowly as you would like it's totally up to you which i love about skillshare but one that i'm really excited to get into is called self-care essentials embrace and nurture the real you now this isn't really like an actual 
art craft or some sort of technical learning that I can implement. It's a learning path that I can just listen to and hear about new ideas to practice self-care and embrace myself. If you would like to try out Skillshare for yourself and try out any of these classes or learning paths, you can use the link in my description. The first 500 people who click on that link and use it will get one month free of Skillshare. What a good deal. Try it out. There's absolutely no pressure, but I have found that Skillshare has helped me so much, like significantly, both my personal life and my small business life. And I just can't wait for it to do the same for you. I'm gonna go and work on the next part of my drawing learning path. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I am back from my walk and dropping off a package for a return at the post office. I'm now eating a little snack. I also did my Skillshare class, which was super fun. Now I need to edit a little bit because I have something that needs to be submitted. This is quite loud. I'm kind of in the bad mood because I put off looking for a rehearsal lunch space for the day before my wedding. Now everywhere's booked, so I'm kind of upset about that. And I'm usually very on top of planning things. I'm like never last minute. So I'm kind of disappointed in myself about that. I think I figured it out. So hopefully it's all settled. After I edit for a bit, I'm going to make some Hoboken tote bags because people love those. And I feel like whenever I do a pop-up in Hoboken, I have to have them. Everyone always sells me out of those. I'm gonna have to weed the vinyl. Even though I swore that I would move this to like a third party. This whole process of cutting out the vinyl, weeding it out, and then using my HGV Rant heat press machine to put it onto the tote bags. I found a really good local business that will do all that for me and will actually silk screen it on instead of using HTV, which is a lot less wasteful. It'll save me a lot of time. I'll be supporting a local business and it'll be a better quality tote bag. So I'm gonna do that in the future. But for this pop-up, I am going to make maybe three or four tote bags. Let's see how much HGV I've left because I don't have that much because I told myself I wouldn't do it anymore. <laughs> and then I also want to cut out some scrunchies. I think I have some satin fabric left that I can use. I want the scrunchie pegboard to look really pretty. Although I am not sure if I'm going to use the scrunchie pegboard or my scrunchie stand thing, which you can kind of see in the corner. The stand might be a little too tall, but we'll see. Maybe I can put it on the ground or something. Also, love my shirt. There are my bachelorette gifts to my bridesmaids. It says the home body club and i just made one for myself and it also has like a bunch of designs on the back which i think are really pretty say and i'm continuing to prepare for the pop shop that's this saturday i'm so excited i feel like i got so much done yesterday just because i got all the candles done like i don't have any more plans to make any more candles which is wild normally i'll go ahead and make a batch of candles and i'll feel like i need more or i don't get things done and i find out that i have to do another batch but i feel good about this batch We'll see if that feeling sticks or if I will need to make more. Um, I did order more wax online, so that should be coming in tomorrow in case I do end up wanting to make some last minute candles, um, whether it be the mini ones or like big ones, whatever. I do need to finish them off by trimming off the wicks. They're all like really tall right now. And then I also need to finish off some of the tops. Some of them are a little wonky, so I need to like fix them and then also label them. I think I'll do that in a little bit because right now I really just want to finish up the, t the Hoboken tote bags. Cut these out with my Cricut yesterday as you saw but now I need to weed them out and I feel like that's a nice soothing relaxing activity to do right now in the morning time. All I really want to do is read my book and I'm feeling kind of tired today so I feel like just doing some really soothing weeding of vinyl will be like a good a good activity for right now. I didn't blow dry my hair today. We're keeping it natural. I'm trying to do that a little more. Even though I like the way it looks blow dried, I just I just want to try to keep it natural every now and then. And then same with the makeup. None, none today. I do have a bunch of things to edit, like so much stuff to edit, both for YouTube and everything else. Um, but I just ran out of space 
on my external hard drive and it's devastating because I did get another one from Amazon. It's coming in tomorrow, which is not the big of a deal, but today was going to be like a big editing day and now it can't really be that. I can do things like locally on my actual laptop, but I also am running out of space on there as well. This is like a chronic problem for me, but that's okay. I have other things to do anyway for the pop-up, so let's do this. Oh, also, this came in the mail yesterday. It's from Ruby's Bras. Owner of Ruby's Bras is a very sweet person, and she reached out to me on Instagram asking if I wanted to use her pattern, her bra pattern, to make my own bra because she saw that I make my own clothes, and I post about it, and I was, like, so pumped to do that, but then I let her know that I didn't have, like, any, like, undergarment type materials because there are, like, certain materials that you need for undergarments that you don't really need for normal apparel and so she very kindly sent me some of the things that i would need like for example like the bra clasp i don't have that and then some little like lining pieces i have like this which i think are the straps see i've clearly never made a bra before or any sort of undergarment so this will be a fun little experiment and i love this bag in addition to selling the pattern for um, this bra, she also just like sells the bras if you're looking for one. They're really pretty and also seem really like sturdy, like they're gonna last a long time. Um, so I definitely recommend her and I'll let you know how this goes. I'll probably make a video about it or at least mention it in some sort of upcoming video. I also got a package from Kiki Textiles, which I am pumped about. Should I open it now? I think I'll open it when the sun comes a little bit over this way onto this table so I can do like an aesthetic unboxing of it. Um, I'm working with Kiki Textiles on a couple different projects, mostly wedding related, some honeymoon related. I'm just like really pumped to be making apparel for myself. I feel like I was really craving creating apparel and so I thought like oh maybe I should make apparel for my brand but that really just the thought of that like drained me because of how tiring <laughs> and how much effort it takes to make custom apparel for many different types of body sizes and shapes. That's definitely something I would love to explore in the future if I wasn't the only person like actually sewing the garments but I was able to scratch that itch of wanting to work on apparel by making clothes for myself and it's a lot simpler and it's very rewarding because I get to keep the stuff and also I get to make some really cool content out of it. So that's what I've been doing for now. If you don't follow me on Instagram and TikTok, you'll see all the content over there. On here I mainly talk about my small business stuff, but if you want to see any of my personal project type things, that's you can go to my Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> anyway, let's stop talking and do this. Or maybe I'll talk to you while I do it. Mm, what should what should we do about that? Also, I'm wearing my Oh man, just do what you love sweatshirt again. And underneath it, I actually have another t-shirt that I recently got from the same brand. It says all this and more. Okay, you can't really see it. When I take off my sweatshirt later, when it gets warm, I'll show you. But it's from the same small business called Word Strings Co. I literally talk about them all the time. But the owner's very sweet. I love her Instagram. And she was having a crazy sale, so I bought two t-shirts. Okay, now I'm done talking. I'm just deciding if I want to do like a time lapse or if I want to continue speaking. Do I have anything to say right now? We will do a montage. <laughs> All done with weeding out these HTV pieces. I did three of them, so this is what it looks like after it's weeded out, but I just want to show you how much waste it creates, which is why I want to move to having this done with silkscreen printing with a third party like local vendor because this is all of the like waste that comes out of it. I used to save it all to try to think of some sort of project where I can use these scraps, and I'm sure I could like use it in some sort of craft, but I come up with like so much of this waste 
after making all these that like it's just I want to figure out like a new process like I don't want this anymore so this will be my last time doing this and I'm going to now like start sending these totes to that local business I was talking about and they'll silk screen it on which only uses ink and minimal waste they reuse the little like things that you put on top like the transfer papers I can't I'm not really sure what they're called instead of these like single use HTVs. So that's, that's the deal with that, but I'm happy I have these done. I'm now gonna use, oh my gosh, my HTV ROM machine is just like covered in a bunch of stuff, but I'm gonna use that to heat transfer all of these on. are done i have three of them they look great as always honestly <laughs> i don't know what's going on but i am getting through these crafts so quickly like i had planned for this process trimming off the wicks doing this to take quite some time i also edited like a portion of a video this morning i'm just so speedy lately i don't know what's going on but i'm living for it oh, okay here's the t-shirt with my sweatshirt off from word strings co it says all this and more and then on the back it has like a list of cute things so you can't really see all of them because i'm short but it's just like a cute list of like cute things <laughs> i just like the color scheme i like the whole vibe also i just wanted to show this candle real quick because i love it and not that many people purchase it from my site but it's one of my favorites the scent is from vine vita and i mix it with some other things but the main scent is from vine vita it's called mahogany teakwood and oak and i love the label on this one looks like this i was just finishing off the top Yesterday of this one, this is already pre-made. And then this is also what the 12 ounce R jar looks like. It's pretty big, good size. Um, and then I put a lid on it, but as I mentioned, I am going to phase out of the lids. And yeah, I just wanna show it to you guys in case any of you are interested in it. It's one of my favorites. I feel like I don't talk about it enough. All right, now what? I could do scrunchies. I don't think I'm doing pouches. Yeah, let's see what we have with scrunchies. Oh, maybe I can also unbox no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me finish off the tops of those candles, label them all, and get them out of the sun because the sun is slowly shifting onto that table, which I don't want them to melt again. And then I will unbox some of the fabric that I got from Kiki Textiles, and we'll see where else today takes us. I feel like it's a really nice day outside today. I think it's supposed to get up to like 70 degrees, and it's March, so crazy. Have you guys signed up for any pop-ups this year yet? Because I know a lot of people continue to do pop-ups throughout the year and they just do like indoor ones. So let me know if you're doing them and how they're going because I'm curious to like hear if people still are eager to buy things in January and February. Because I feel like that's when a lot of people tend to like have their New Year's resolutions to not spend as much money or to hit some savings goals. And I feel like it, it's not as effective doing markets because not as many people are interested in like purchasing things i'm just labeling my candles by the way while we talk the minis are so cute they're like my favorite things they're so cute but they're like really sturdy like solid candle i'm nervous about this one being my first one in a while because i always like low-key forget things and as i go through the pop-up season I get better and better so I feel like last year 
my holiday pop-up that I did in Jersey City was like the best one I did all year in terms of like how prepared I was and how I interacted with people and like the stuff I decided to bring. I like basically sold out. Yeah, I like sold out of everything except for like three mini candles during that pop-up and so I just feel like all around it was like just like great and that has to do with all the practice I had throughout the year of doing pop-ups and then when I take like two months off and I get back into it I like forget <laughs> little things. I need to make an official checklist of things that I need to bring the day of the pop-up because I feel like I'm gonna forget things and I usually do forget things but I'm gonna make an official like checklist. I think I'll share it with you guys. I did decide that I am going to create a Patreon just for some more like behind the scenes type content in case you're into like the real like nitty gritty specifics of what I do. I'll share some things on there. I was thinking about also doing like either an extra video on there or like a podcast episode, like something of that sort. Um, but on there, I, I want to share like the checklist that I use to like that I go by the day of the pop-up when I'm packing up. I feel like that'd be a good place to share it. So look out for a Patreon link. I don't know if I'll put it in this video description or one coming up, but I think I've decided I want to do that. People have convinced me. All right. Oh, that's really unfortunate. I only have two more Blackberry Honeysuckle and Must labels and I have three candles. I do still print these out on my Cricut because it's just easiest for now. I could order them from fast printing like how I do with the bigger candles that I have. I actually don't know why I don't do that. I think it's because they're really small and it's not as big of a deal to print them out on my Cricut. All right, every time I go to like place a label, I get really silent because I don't want to mess up. One of my favorite labels. I've been really into blue lately, so anything that's blue just catches my eye. Yeah, I am trying to make some of the processes that I have go a little quicker via outsourcing some things. My brand isn't called Monica's DIYs anymore and it hasn't been that way for the past like two years. So I shouldn't like hold myself back and try to make myself do everything when I should be open to delegating tasks. It's difficult for me though, because I love doing everything. Somewhat of a control freak, but I mean, it's also a good thing that I enjoy doing things, but I need to balance it out. All right, there is a little bit of spillage here just pretty unfortunate. I like lost balance while I was boring in the wax, uh, but now I have like candle wax on the sides of this, which is really unfortunate. I have to clear that off. If it were cold in here, I would need to like melt this down with a hair dryer to wipe it off, but because it's already kind of warm in here and these are like basically sitting in the sun at this point, or at least these ones were, it's easy to rub off. And it's fine with these like cream aura jars to wipe it off because it doesn't leave a residue but with the black aura vessels you can see every single little smudge including my fingerprints which is why i keep them in these plastics palo santo these smell so good and then this is the little sticker page for it i like don't burn my own candles enough i really should for quality assurance purposes but then also because my candles are low-key my favorite candles, <laughs> so why not burn them and enjoy them for myself? I do have like a few candles that are under this table that the camera's sitting on right now, my glass table, that are kind of mess ups or they're of fragrances that I don't use anymore. Various issues wrong with them and it happens, like not every single candle that I make is like absolutely perfect and usable. Oh no, this one like has a lot wrong with it. <laughs> and so I can totally burn those and then also I can make content out of it like burning my own candle taking some videos of it I don't know why I don't do it so cute I think for our party favors at the end of our wedding we are going to give out these mini candles but I'm gonna get the white vessels I think this is the plan as of now don't quote me on this because we may change our minds but I was thinking of doing white minis white 2.5 ounce aura jars wooden wick obviously and then the labels will all be customized per person because it's going to be a small wedding it won't take too much effort to make custom candle labels for each person i don't know what they would say maybe the person's name or some cute message or something scent i'm not sure we'd have to agree on it maybe some sort of bridal floral scent um vanilla or something i mean honestly the scent would be really good for it because it's very like soothing, has lavender, it's therapeutic, it's like tame, not too like 
masculine, not too feminine. Yeah, that might be nice, honestly. Oh, but I think that's a really cute idea, and then we can make them together. Like, I know I make candles, but maybe I can make that batch of party favors, like, with Josh, and we can say that, like, we made them together for our friends and family. I think that could be cute. I'm, like, in a little corner right now. I feel a little trapped. I should honestly just move some things around. All right, this actually wants for an order. They got an eight ounce of the Palo Santo and Lily of the Valley. This requires so much focus and concentration. I love these labels. They're so easy to use. They never bubble up. And what's most important for me is that I have sweaty hands. <laughs> so when I touch these, it doesn't smudge at all. We love that. So this is good to be packed up. I think the big ones are my favorite. Like the look and feel of them. Like it's a sturdy candle. I love it. All right, let's, let's do this quickly so that we can move on to some other fun things. packed up all of the candles that were lying out there and I unboxed all the fabric I got from um, Kiki Textiles. So pretty. I'm obsessed. I'm going to post a reel about it um, but just like real quick there's a beautiful well two very beautiful pearl fabrics and I'm so obsessed. Too obsessed. Like I don't know if you can tell how beautiful this is but it's like this pearl fabric how i'm going to sew this i have no idea i'm gonna to have to figure that out i might have to hammer these out or like cut out the pearls where the stitch goes and then i also got a bunch of other really cool white fabrics i have like this thicker um i think it's garbadine i don't know how to say it there's like a silk charmeuse and a white spandex which is like under all of that so beautiful i'm so pumped <laughs> back to pop-up stuff i got all of this satin fabric from under this big bin i had it at the very bottom um and i'm going to cut pretty much all these out to make scrunchies i also have this like scrap fabric from a valentine's day top that i made which would be perfect for like maybe two or three scrunchies I have this black i have like a gray um i don't have a white and i feel like i should have a white so maybe in my stash of fabrics like in the bins over there i'll find some white or like a cream I think all these are really pretty, very spring, very appropriate, colorful. Let's get cutting.
Hi guys, it's actually Friday night. Oh wait, yes, Friday night. I spent all day doing wedding things. We visited our venue and did a bunch of things that needed to be done. So that was great, but now I am back and about to go to sleep, but I just wanted to get some of these scrunchies at least half done and I'll finish up tomorrow morning, hopefully. Tomorrow the pop-up is at 12. I'm gonna get there at like 11, 15-ish to set up. So that gives me from whenever I wake up until 11-ish to finish up some things. Very last minute, but what else did we expect from the first pop-up of 2024? I'm, I'm getting into my groove, so it's okay that this is happening. And I'll just get as many scrunchies done as I can. The only other things I need to do are empty out my bins and figure out exactly what I want to bring tomorrow. And I have like mental notes of what I want to bring. It's going to be not that much because it's only a four foot table. I think I'll bring my scrunchie stand and one of my vertical ledge displays that will display like some of my candles. Maybe the, I'll bring the two vertical ledge stands, the stadium and the belly stand to display all the candles. And I think that's it. I'll need to charge like my, um, my card reader, I need to charge my battery pack. I may or may not bring my iPad. It's a short one, it's only from 12 to four. So as long as I charge my card reader um, and my phone, like bring a little battery for my phone, I should be fine with that. I've had people DMing me asking if I'll be bringing scrunchies and people asking if I'm going to bring if I'm going to bring candles. So those seem like the two products that most people are excited about. Other than that, I'm also bringing the Hoboken tote bags. And I think that's it for this first one. I think that's good enough and it'll be like a good start to the season. I'm very pumped. Also, I don't know if I've ever showed these yellow scrunchies. I like the color a lot because they're very muted. I think it's very spring, summery. Um, even kind of like Easter themed, because I know that's coming up for people. All of my colors right now are very like pastel and cutesy. So I think this is like a good season to have these colors that pop up. I'm very excited. I'm just turning my scrunchie tubes right side out. So if you know, I sew these burrito styled and that involves me turning these right side out. So that's what's happening. So this will be the last activity for tonight because I'm pretty tired. For some reason this blue fabric frays like a lot so much more than any of my other fabrics and i'm pretty sure i got them all from the same place i don't know if i've ever brought these purple ones also to a pop-up i'm not even sure if i brought any of these to pop-ups except for the pink ones i know for a fact i've brought those before pink always does like pretty well i sh really should make some black ones because i feel like neutral ones always do really well and i don't really have white that i can use i checked and i don't have like a nice white satin that i'm willing to use i have like white satin that I want to use for like other projects, but not for scrunchies. So I should really get on that. Fabric Wholesale Direct has some really good like affordable fabrics that I might consider. I think that's where some of these are from actually. Although a bunch of these are from Fab Scrap and like places like that. I'm trying to make the hole too small and it's like really hard to get these out. I need to edit a bunch, which will probably happen tomorrow after the pop-up. But I'm also dying to read because I'm obsessed with my book right now. So it's really tough prioritizing at the moment. I do think I'm going to end this video here and start a new video tomorrow for the actual pop-up shop vlog along with any of the last minute preparations I will be doing tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.